Joining us tonight is Tom Fitt, the president of Judicial Watch. Tom, great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, your reaction to the Rosenstein um, revelations. I guess it would be the second set of revelations. Well, the left is all excited about it because it shows a senior DOJ official released the text messages. Uh, you raised the more important issues about when and how did Rosenstein know about Strzok and Page's political bias against Mr. Trump, and why wasn't that a reason to go back and look at all the FISA warrants? Why, that, why wasn't that a reason to go ahead and stop the Mueller investigation until they could at least figure out whether it was illegally motivated as a result of Page and Strzok's machinations? Uh, but to be clear here, Page and Strzok are still being protected by the FBI. They wouldn't be suing if they thought there was any reasonable expectation they'd be prosecuted. In fact, the FBI is still withholding some of these text messages from the American people. Uh, unbelievable. It is unbelievable. It is incredible, and all the more so because this president uh, has chosen this attorney general, who has chosen John Durham as his uh, special uh, uh, prosecutor on this. Uh, it is, it's difficult to imagine a more frustrating process than what the president has gone through. First, almost a year of FBI investigation over the collusion allegations. Uh, they really didn't rise to that level, but at least enough uh, people were uh, involved in a uh, crossfire hurricane to make it seem so. Then came the special counsel investigation. Then comes the radical Dems uh, conference uh, seeking impeachment uh, in the House of Representatives. This is infuriating, it is maddening, and it seems there's been no reflex, at least as one would have expected, either from the president's attorney general, uh, now that we know what is happening, or some aggressive prosecution of those who've obviously clearly abused their power while in office in the Justice Department and the top of the FBI. There's been no penalty for, as you point out, the worst corruption scandal in American history. Uh, in fact, the kooka ball over at the House is going to get rewarded with a two-week impeachment trial. It will likely end up uh, resulting in the president's ultimate vindication, but it will be a process that will further undermine him. And he is abroad right now representing the United States of America in foreign affairs. This whole process is designed to undermine his ability to do that. It raises questions about his communication with foreign leaders in an improper way. Mm -hmm. And the Senate can't shut this down soon enough. If I were his lawyers, I'd be looking that th to say there should be no trial. Yeah. There's no good faith basis for this. There should be no trial. To the degree there's a trial, to the degree there's an investigation, it needs to be into the House abuse of process here of the president. And what's remarkable about all the years that we've been listening to all this, I think this is the first time the president has been able to put out a defense against this malarkey. Indeed it is. And as, uh, as you point out, there shouldn't be a trial. The president's attorneys today arguing precisely that that the Senate said simply move on beyond this uh, partisan farce. Uh, it is, uh, and it is a national disgrace that we're having these proceedings because of the party of hate, uh, the uh, national left-wing media, who are at the very least uh, accomplices in all of this. I want to turn to Adam Schiff now, because you have said from the beginning that it is Adam Schiff who should be on trial here. Uh, and uh, not the president of the United States. Uh, is there a, practically a, uh, a, a possibility at some point because he has lied throughout? Well, if there are witnesses to be had in this trial, and I'm not sure one way or another where, where it's going to go, uh, Schiff should be on the short list of witnesses. The president's brief makes the case today that he is a fact witness uh, and questions his involvement in setting up, uh, corruptly forming and corruptly pursuing this coup attack on the president. And, you know, if he's a fact witness, he can't be a prosecutor. And I recommend mm -hmm. that the president and his lawyers seek to disqualify him, remove him. He's conflicted. He can't be a prosecutor and a witness at the same time. And so the Senate should let him play ball here. And I want to turn to Senator Mitch McConnell, the majority leader. Uh, it seems to me acting rationally and appropriately uh, in uh, support of the president. 
the McConnell uh, effectively kill switch for the proceedings. I, will we see a rule that would allow the president's uh, team to move to dismiss the impeachment process uh, or, or, or what? Well, there's a rule or not that they'll be able to seek a uh, dismissal. Uh, the suggestion has been that won't pass the Senate. I tell you what, if there, I think McConnell's taking the right approach in terms of trying to restrict uh, the trial to as brief a period of time as possible so the president isn't further abused. Uh, but if the other side gets their witnesses, in my view, it should be all bets off. They should look beyond Hunter Biden to the Clinton gang, bring they, th them in. If you look at the House Democrats' brief, they talk about everything over the last three years. If that's the case, let's bring in Christopher Steele. Let's bring in Hillary Clinton. Let's bring in Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. Let's bring in Mr. Horowitz to talk about his IG findings. If they want to go down the witness path, McConnell should say, let it ride. Tom Fenton, as always, great to have you here. Thanks so You're much, welcome. Tom. Tom Fenton, Judicial Watch.